Welcome back, my loyal citizens of Ottawa. GM Yeesh here, and we are officially near two of this rebuild up here at the start of November. And in the last episode, we got to see more or less what to expect from the season, right? With two, eight, and one, about where we thought we'd be, bottom of the barrel. And our overall goal hasn't changed in the sense that we still want to tank this season while prioritizing the growth of our young core. Which brings us to the question I put to you guys last episode. Should Branny play in the NHL, or should we start in the AHL and call him up later in the year? And you guys seem to uh, generally lean in, start him in the AHL, give him top two minutes, plenty of ice time, and then we call him up later in the year. And I'm perfectly okay with that. He's gaining morale because of ice time, so he's getting plenty of ice time down here. He's having success, almost point per game. So you love to see that. And it worked for Thomas Shabbat, right? So I don't see any reason not that it wouldn't work with uh, Branny. I want to get some simulating done this video, uh, hopefully up to around the trade deadline. But one thing I noticed while I was uh, <clears throat> looking at the stats of this video, right? Gabrick has zero points in 11 games. So whenever Brady Kachuk gets back on the second line and is completely healthy, which should be a day or two, right? Um, if I remember from last video correctly. I'm going to replace Gabrick with Mahler, and Gabrick can go on the healthy scratch list. <laughs> so then we'll have about, let's see, what is this? 5 million, 11 million, about 16 mil million worth of healthy scratches. It looks really bad, but it allows us to play our young guns. Um, I was thinking about flipping Gabrick. He does have a little bit of trade value, but realistically, who's going to take on a 37-year-old with two more years left at 4 million? Who has no points 11 games right doesn't make much sense i might waive him uh that seems a little more fair but for now just let it be now this kid rudolph the balsers before i get the simulation started boys take a look at him so he's a fast player he fits our system there and he's listed as a sniper but he has fantastic defensive categories he has pretty decent offensive stats and like i said he's super disciplined he doesn't take penalties and he hits. This could be a really, really good third liner for us. Now I'm not, haven't penciled him, him into anything yet, but I like what I've seen from him so far. I'm gonna give this kid a chance to succeed this season. So I'll go ahead and simulate a day or two ahead. Uh, ooh, Grab has been injured with a pulled groin. That's fine. Uh, give it one more day and Brady Kachuk should be back before next game oh my gosh he's still not back all right we're just going to do the slow simulation advance a day i'm not going to there he is there he is i know he could play through the injury but i'm not going to risk injury for the guy um and have him potentially get hurt even worse right maybe for a playoff game but regular season when we're trying to protect the rookies it just goes against what we're trying to do so sanford eight goals in 14 games continuing to tear it up there we go let's get mauler there um, let's see. I want to give Mahler, yeah, yeah, I will swap him out with Yurko. I want to give Mahler some power play time if possible. Very nice. Uh, how's this top power play unit doing? I should have checked that before. Only two points, eh? Who should I swap out? Um, I'll try. I'll just try keeping it simple. Not too many big changes here yet. Our lack of a right handed shot kind of worries me on that top unit, but, um, Hopefully it won't be too bad, so I'll go ahead and simulate up for another month here, see where we stand. I know Pittsburgh, we have their first round pick, they were struggling early on. I believe San Jose is having some success, but um, if we can get a couple more first, like in the higher tier, 15 or below, that would be fantastic. Now, Pittsburgh, in general, I feel it will be a good year for rookies, very nice. Pittsburgh, um, even if they're somehow finished bottom five, right, by some miracle, we won't use their lottery pick. We'll say their pick is lottery protected, but I feel it's fair if it's a top 10 pick or something like that. I don't like to complain, but I'm having a tough time coming to grips with being scratched. Sorry, Gabrick. Hey, I gave you every chance to perform, boys. I, I said I wasn't going to scratch him. I was going to give him the respect he deserved, but he has zero points in 11 games. I had to change something, right? Something had to go. All right, Gribe is back. Very nice. Um... So this Garen kid is 50 overall. That's fine. I kind of forced him into the lineup, I know. But um, <clears throat> I feel like it was better to do that than have him play in the U.S. Because this AHL team is really good. Hopefully he can learn something playing with uh, other guys. All right. 
let's go ahead and get back to the simulation here. <laughs> the season's going about how you think it would, right? 4, 11, and 4. Perfectly okay with that, right? Losing for Lafreniere. Let's get that hashtag trending in Canada, boys. I want to see it on all the Ottawa Senators' uh, message boards across Canada right now. Losing for Lafreniere, boys. Let's get her done. Uh, actually, you know what? This is a pretty decent month. It's a lot of close games. We're scoring goals. Um, our big. I feel like our biggest problem down the line is going to be goaltending. I'm not not entirely sold on Gustafsson as our starter next year. I believe he's like 77 overall, somewhere around there. I'll go ahead and simulate a couple more days. There we go. I want to... Now, the start of December, insanely important, boys. December... Griba gets hurt again. December is when you can start to tell which one of your prospects could be very, very special. Um, the potential, right? That's great for trade value. Still don't have Lafreniere scouted. Jeez. The potential is great for trade value, right? But it's not what you expect them to be. It's their absolute ceiling. So the only other thing you can judge prospects on, oh my gosh, another gym defenseman who's a left-handed shot. I'll go ahead and mark him down. Maybe he plays better on his offhand or something. I don't know. But, um, sorry, what was I saying? Right, right. If the prospects are special and they simulate very well, they'll you'll tend to see signs of growth from, oh my gosh, from December onward, boys. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? 16 goals into he might be. I have to I have to check this, boys. He might be leading the league in goals. I it's gonna be close. Batherson up there in points. Brady Kachuk only has one goal. <laughs> oh, that's fine. He's on the line with the. Uh, Sanford, he's not going to get many. Someone's got to do the scoring, right? Let's see. Goals. Sanford leads the NHL. He's tied for the league. And go oh, my gosh. This kid is something special, boys. He is something special. I, I know the term generational talent is insanely overused in today's NHL, right? Uh, you hear it all the time for pretty, pretty good prospects, pretty good young kids. Um if you're leading the league in goals at 18, 19 years old, you're a generational talent in my book. Like, that is not something you see very often. We haven't seen that since Ovechkin, McDavid, Crosby, right? And I would say all those guys are elite talents. Oh, that first line is taking a beating. Chris Tierney. Uh, all right. As long as he's not getting upset, which means his overall and value could drop, I'm okay. Third line is slowed down. That makes sense. They were overperforming to start with. Um... You expect that, right? Let's see. Pajo, he's having an okay season. Um, is Branny growing at all? Let's see. Branny, 17 points, and he's, his role is now a depth defenseman. And he's continuing to gain morale. All right, so I'm going to leave Branny there for now. No reason to rush him. Norris, over a point per game. Very nice. I could call him up, but like I said, no reason to rush any of these guys. Let's give her another month. Uh, before that, any growth from any of our young guys? That's what I want to see. Because if they're... There's two types of growth. There's the kind that could... Uh, most prospects, like 90-ish percent of prospects, you'll see them start to grow around January. But the really special prospects, you'll see them start to grow around December, right? In this next week and a half, if there's any signs of growth, then we should be very excited about whatever prospect that is. So I'm just going to keep an eye on these kids. 54 for Malikov, 78. Very nice. Now, <laughs> Sanford, I honestly think, like, even if he only grows two overall from here on out, like, we already see what he's doing. It doesn't matter. His stats are already insanely elite. Uh, it's just, uh, what do you call it, a couple of the physical attributes aren't quite up there yet. That's why his overall is lower. But he's already top amongst offensive players. I'll get another week and a half done here go around to the Christmas break and then we'll see if uh, there's any growth amongst players yeah the boys are getting a bit upset all this losing takes its toll man it's not fun can't be fun for the city of Ottawa it's not fun for the players no one likes losing right I know tanking a tanking in the game can be kind of entertaining it's fun to rebuild a team but all this losing gets to you man there you go once your team becomes even a little bit decent, you're like, all right, I have to go out and win the cup. I have to go out and win the cup this season when you're barely making the playoffs. Pressure gets to you. 
So Gustafsson, minor starting goalie. He should be around 80-ish overall at the start of next season. At the very least, could contend for the starting job. Uh, Brady Kachuk continuing to tear it up. Sanford, good gosh, 21 goals, boys. Oh, my word. This kid is something special. This kid is just, oh. Batherson having a fantastic season. Uh, Brownie. Okay, this third line's minus 10. Oh my gosh, the fourth line is brutal. Fourth line is absolutely, yeah. Tyranny's upset. You know what? Uh, Balsers. Let's try swapping Duclair. Mm hmm. Duclair. Yeah, yeah. Let's try swapping those two. See if that sparks them. 16 points. Oh my gosh, minus 17. Ugh. Uh, so good Branson might not be the guy to pair with Shabbat. We needed right-handed shooting defenseman for Shabbat so bad. Goalies, that's fine. I sent the scouts out, boys, to look for some right-handed shooting defensemen. Let's go ahead and get up to January and see if any of our prospects are displaying uh, any kinds of growth yet. Green had a minor injury, so he's fine. Ugh, eight wins, yeah. It takes its toll, boys. It takes its toll. Losing is just not good. Not good for anyone, <laughs> except our lottery chances. All right. Speaking of which, do we know what we're tanking for yet? Do we were we able to scout Lafreniere? I will check that first before I look at anything else like growth. Um, draft class. Let's take a look. We still don't have him scouted, man. This is ridiculous. Lafreniere, hard to scout. A lot of these guys still unscouted. I will take care of that, boys. No worries. Um, I will do fin some finagling with the scouts. Might do a little power video editing if I have to. Um, but we will get them scouted out. Make no mistake. Let's see. So that kid's still listed as a gem. Burke holes. Low top six. Eh, left wing. Could be something decent. All right. I'm going to go to proposed trade. Just take a look at see who our... Uh, <clears throat> and our pipeline has grown. So Malakov is showing some growth. Love to see that. Sanford, ugh, he's unhappy. Not in love with that. How are you unhappy? He's gaining morale because of recent individual performance. Should I be giving him more ice time? That's the question. I mean, he's top, he has to be at least top five in the NHL in goals, right? I'm not sure I want to risk that. It, like, hmm, that's a tough one. Do I prioritize growth? Or do I prioritize... Oh, and Batherson's unhappy. Yeah, a lot of unhappy faces here. Garen's grown five overall, so that's huge. Like, he could be one of those pre special prospects. Keep an eye on him. Bossers, 10 points. Very nice. Uh, hmm. Anthony Duclair, 11 goals, draft picks. So, Pittsburgh and San Jose, let's take a look at them. I think they've come back down to earth, right? 28, yeah, their presence trophy level. And Pittsburgh, uh, I don't know. That might not be playoff spot. Pittsburgh looks like a wild card team right now. Well, we look uh, bottom of the barrel. Uh, third in the division, but look at that. They literally just lose like two, three games in a row. They're second last in the division. It's a tight race, exactly what we're hoping for. Maybe we send some assets to uh, other teams' directions, right? And increase that trade value. I will go ahead and... Do some power video editing. Get the scouting figured out, boys. Um, that'll be huge. Yeah, first, let's take a look at where uh, Sanford lies amongst the NHL's... Forget rookie scoring. Just in NHL's goal scoring in general. This kid is insane. 22. He's tied for the league leading goals, boys. This kid is something special. Good gosh. And he's doing it with almost no help. He's doing it with an 80 overall and 82 overall. Kane has, like, the Brinkett, Taze. Kessel has Crosby, Malkin. This is ridiculous. If only we could get him a little better on the power play. All right, boys. Let me do some power video editing. Get the scouting figured out. A couple other things like the trade block. And we will be right back. All righty, boys. We got our top scouts uh, on Lafrenet. We will figure out what we're trying to tank for here exactly. We know he's the consensus number one pick, but we don't know much besides that, right? Oh, imagine him in a... 
Sanford on a line together could be disgusting. Could be one of the t new top duos in the NHL right now. But we have bigger problems to worry about, boys. Way bigger problems and way more immediate. Our locker room chemistry is at a whopping 42%, and that is terrible. Now, obviously, this mostly has to do with the fact that we're losing and we suck. But I did some further digging into the situation, you know, doing my due diligence. And I discovered, look at this. Low locker room chemistry, Andy Green. Um, let's see, who else was it? Brady Kachuk, you, yeah, Andy Green again. Uh, you're gonna sense it, see a pattern here, boys. A lot of the young kids do not get along with Andy Green, right? So, I'm not going to have him drag us down. I'm going to do some stuff with the waivers, right? Send a couple of the guys down to the AHL so they won't be cancers to these young guys. Um, in an already very trying season, right? In a trying times like these, we need the boys to gel together, come together as a group, and not fight amongst themselves. Having a veterans who are upset and unhappy with the way things are going, when we told them that this is what they were signing up for when we traded for them or acquired them, is going to make the situation that much worse. So I'm gonna simulate ahead a couple days until a couple guys get healthy and try to do some, uh, make some moves with the lines, right? So. As soon as, I believe I'm waiting on an AHL guy. Yeah, here we go. Mard Marinson, very nice. He's back. <sighs> All right, so everyone who's unhappy, I'm going to uh, send down and or call up. There we go. Get you ahead right there. All right, so let me do some more power video editing, boys, with the lines here, and I will be right back. All right, boys, so... What I did was I sent down all the guys who are super unhappy or cancers in the locker room. And because we don't want guys like Tierney, right, to drop off an overall, he's super unhappy, constantly losing morale because of uh, recent individual performance. I'm going to play him on a line with Kachuk and Sanford. Hopefully that line gets some growth. And for the veterans, like Bobby, guys like Bobby Ryan, they've been consistently underperforming the entire season. So, you know what, screw it. I'm going to give the youngins some chance to play here. Um... I also sent down, obviously, Andy Green, and I believe one other defenseman, right, Ben Harper, because, again, both just cancers. We don't need that. We're stepping on coals as is, right? It's already looking very dangerous, so I want to go ahead and try and get up to the all-star break here. I am crossing my fingers and praying to the hockey gods that no one drops in overall, or even worse, so help us, someone requests a trade, because we are not that far away from it. So... I would like to thank you for the call up. You won't regret it. Just happy to have someone who uh, wants to be here, you know? Very nice. Uh, you know what? Let's go ahead and stop the simulation and see if my uh, little tactics here worked. Our chemistry was at 42%, I believe. All right, it's up to 48%, boys. Still, not the greatest, but it's something, right? It's something, and I will take it. Let's go ahead and get up to about here. Uh, start of a new month. All-star break. Pro scout calling, that's fine. Uh, the scout should be calling me back uh, right around now for uh, Lafreniere. Don't know what's taking him so long. Uh, yeah, that's the one bad thing about overplaying the youngins. Sometimes they will get hurt, but that was a risk I was willing to take in an effort to uh, give them a shot, right? Give them more shot ice time because guys like Chaplick, he's not going to get another shot. This is his year to prove something to me. Um, I don't have him penciled in anywhere in the lineup. So if he wants to show something to me, this is his year. This is his chance. He needs to go out there and take it. All right, boys. Looks like we have Lafreniere at least partially scouted. He is a high elite, so not quite franchise, but he has an A-level shooting, A-plus puck skills, A-senses, C-skating, B... Huh. Another Patrick Kane. He... Jeez, boys. I'm not even sure he's NHL ready. A, A plus, A, C skating, B minus, B minus. Oh, is Lafreniere NHL ready? I'm not sure. Ugh, what? Ooh, that's that's a tough one. Do we go based off of ceiling, or would we want a more NHL ready guy like Kruger here? Interesting. That could be a tough decision to make, but you know what? It's one I will happily uh, undertake, right? It's, it's a position I want to be put in because we have that first overall pick. At least we have the chance to make a bad decision instead of that decision being made for us. I'd rather that. Uh, all right. So no more gems unlocked just yet. 
Edmondson. He's that left-handed shooting defenseman. And I'm starting to like Balser, so I'm going to decline that trade. Nice to see the AHL team getting along great. Another fantastic season for them. All right. Chaplick. Oh, yeah. I also tried to give Stamper a little more ice time, so hopefully that paid dividends. Sweet. He's grown to a 86 overall, and his role is a first-line forward. And he's the same exact, hmm, he's not gaining morale because of ice time. That could be an issue. Batherson, uh, Batherson's up and down. Honestly, third line, I'm not going to like force these guys, right? This isn't a make or break year for these guys. Balsers, I think he dropped a bit. So I'll, I'll go ahead and put him back on the fourth line, just experimenting with them. A couple of these guys we can afford to experiment with because, like I said, this is a make or break year for them. We don't have the luxury, or won't have the luxury of playing them, giving them this opportunity every season. I'm going to try Camper on the top pairing. He was happy to be here. So there we go. Let's check out the AHL squad. Any important growth down here yet? Norris is a 78. Very nice. Love to see it. He's almost point per game despite being minus. Branny is still a 78. Again, no, no hurry to rush him. Perfectly okay with that. Hmm. Let's see, I will go up here because prospects usually start throwing uh, growth at the turn of a new month, right? Oh dear, we have some decisions to make, boys. Huge decisions to make. I'm not sure. We need to make a trade for a right-handed shooting defenseman. Pieces for that would probably involve like a tyranny. Um, yeah, the, Jet, the Canucks have Jet Wu. Maybe he's someone we could try and trade for. I will try and get him scouted. There we go. Who doesn't want to play with a name like that? I'm not making this trade, obviously. We're clearly not in any position to be taking on rentals. I don't know what Vancouver is smoking. There we go. Must be some of that new uh, legalized Canadian good stuff. Am I right? All right. DeAndre Sanford continues to lead the team in points. He's probably not in contention for the goal scoring race anymore, right? He's uh, slowed down, but that's to be expected considering this team just doesn't have the, uh, what do you call it? He doesn't have the help he needs on this team. Yeah, he's probably out of the goal scoring race. Let's just make sure. I mean, <laughs> he's still sixth in the NHL in goals. And one good run, and he's right back near the top. So I'm hopeful for him. Um, let's see. So we have that. All right, let's go ahead and look at the prospect growth right now. See where we are in terms of that. Any prospects growing? Uh, Branny still in 86. So no one's... No one's really showed any growth. Oh, Brownie, there we go. I was going to say Brownie's now listed as a second line forward. Ooh. But he's having a good year on that third line, and I'm really not trying to rush anyone, right? Okay, okay, boys. See, that's what I was talking about right there. Every now and then, you will draft a player who is not only has a fantastic potential, like elite, but they also grow like a maniac. And we have one kid at least who grows like an absolute machine in Jason Guerin. He started the season as a 50 overall and he's up at 69. This is a kid who could be NHL ready in as soon as a year, right? So going to keep a close eye on him, see what he's all about. Um, but that's huge for our right wing side. Let us go ahead. Hmm. Let's see. So we are, are we last in the NHL? Yeah, only yeah, okay. Only the Islanders are close. <laughs> Edmonton. Oh, imagine having the greatest player in the world and still sucking. Um, let's see. Now, what do we need to do here? Should I do some pyro video editing? Nah, 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 nah. I could give Brownie some more ice time, but I like him where he is. I want to go ahead and try and get up to the trade deadline, boys. And then. We need to make decisions in the next video on what to do. Because we are walking on thin ice right now. Super thin ice. Players could drop. Okay. Okay. Slower down. Brock Nelson. No, I'm not trading for rentals. Why do people assume I want a rental player? I'm the worst team in the NHL. Why are you trying to give me rentals? All right. No, 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 no. no. I was going to get up to the trade deadline, boys, but forget about it. Forget about it. No, I'm not doing it. We're going to stop the video here. We are walking on thin ice. Chris Tierney's overall could drop at any second. Guys like Sanford aren't getting any happier. Uh, Logan Brown, he's clearly ready for this second line center spot. Um, 
it's way too risky. The risk outweighs the reward of continuing the simulation at this point, right? So I'm not going to do that. Malakov still 57. Okay. Foreman at a 74. Very nice. Uh, Norris still 78. Okay. So I will go ahead. The last thing I will do is look at, take one last look at the draft class. See if we have anyone else scouted out. And then I will go ahead and just browse through the trade block real quick so you guys have uh, ideas. I'm not going to stop on any teams, right? I'll just go ahead and browse through them real quick. And if you guys see anyone you like, you can go ahead and suggest them to me for the next video. Uh, Jacob Truba on the Winnipeg Jets. If he never signed with them, then that might be someone we want to target, right? Uh, again, you guys can just pause the video if you see someone you like. I'm just going to skim through. Not really going to pay too much attention to any of these names. Tyson Berry, but he's a bit too old. Uh, and we don't have the assets necessary to go after him. Uh, if there's a good name in here, I might stop, but I'm not seeing anyone so far. Not a lot of good right-handed shots. Petrie, too old. Same with Weber, obviously. Vatman, uh, I don't really want another offensive defenseman when I have Branny coming up. Uh... Hmm. Patterson, but he's a left-handed shot. We really need that right-handed shot. Edmondson is a lefty, right? Just making sure. Okay. Edmondson is a lefty. Braden Point, but he's not a defenseman, obviously. <laughs> Marner held out the entire year, eh? Hopefully that doesn't happen in real life. I don't like seeing players hold out, and it's just not fun not being able to watch them play, right? Hudden would be a good pick, but he's, again, a left-handed shooting defenseman. We need that righty. All right, and last but not least, so Truba held out the entire year, boys. Jacob Truba. You want us to go after someone, Truba might be the guy, right? Maybe we offer Tierney, and the Jets are just barely hanging on to that playoff spot. So, And they don't have that second-line center, right? Little should be a third-line center on a good team at best. Maybe even a fourth-line center. So are they interested in Tierney at all? I will go ahead and set that up for you guys. They are not. Ugh. All right, so what do they want? Defense. So it'd be like a Willannon maybe, or a Balsers and some pieces. If you guys want it, if you guys want it to happen, I will do everything in my power to make it work. If you don't think there's a good trade out there, or uh, that we'd be forcing it, I won't make any trades. We can hold on to all of our assets until the draft. We're going to have at least a lottery pick, uh, a top five pick with our own. And where is Pittsburgh? Pittsburgh is currently barely out of a playoff spot, right? So that might be another pick we can use. We'll stop San Jose's. Hopefully they biff it in the playoffs like they do every single year in their franchise. Um, we have some big decisions to make, boys. This is a make or break. I don't want to say, okay, it's not a make or break trade deadline, but if we can get the assets we need right in return and we have a good year of drafting, all of a sudden we're looking at potential playoff contenders next season or maybe the season after that, right? So this is a very important time for your Ottawa Senators here up at uh, year two. Let me know what you guys think we should do, and I will see you all in the next episode.